Cool, what's up guys? Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 quick tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to continue our series on joints by creating a vise inside of Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is just a very simple vise that I've modeled and the assumption is that this would be screwed into or bolted into a table over here or something like that. But I wanted to do kind of a quick example of how we could use joints inside of Fusion 360 in order to make this vise operate when we spin the handle. And so the first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna notice I've modeled out three bodies, right? I've modeled out the body that makes up the handle and this, the threaded piece of metal. And then I've also got my two vice pieces. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to take all of these and we need to make them components. And I may start, we'll go ahead and label them in a second. But for now, we're gonna take all three of these bodies, select them and right click, and we're gonna click on create components from bodies. So now we have three different components. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna label this one handle. I'm gonna label this one fixed vice. I'm gonna label this one moving vice. And this is just for my organization. And so what we wanna do is we wanna take all of these and remember the only way that you can um, create joints is to have these in here as components, which is what we just did. And so now what we wanna do is we want to create two different joints. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create a joint between our fixed vice and our handle. So we're just gonna go into a symbol and click on joint in order to do that. And so we're gonna add in a new joint right here. And so the way that we're gonna do that is, if you remember the way that joints work inside of Fusion 360, is that they need to have the same base point in order for this to really work properly. And so probably what I'm gonna do in this situation is I'm going to set a joint maybe based on this hole right here. And so you can see how what I can do is I can mouse over this and then hold the control key. And when I hold the control key, you can see how my little marker in here inferences to these different points. Well, in this case, we wanna inference to the center point right here. So that's gonna be our first component. Then our second component, we wanna do the same thing, but we wanna hold our control key over this endpoint right here. And so what that's gonna do is you can see how that spun this around. And so the first thing we wanna do is we actually wanna select this in the opposite direction. So we wanna select this so that our first component is going to be the moving part. So we're going to mouse over this end point and hold the control key. And then we'll mouse over this other point or we'll mouse over this face, hold the control key, and then mouse over this point and click. So you can see how what that did is that moved this joint back so that it aligned with this other point. And so what we wanna do is in this case, we're gonna want this to be a cylindrical joint. So what that means is this is gonna spin and then move in and out. So you can see how when I do this, um, this automatically sets the right axis because we set the right base point in here. So this is moving in and out. So this is doing exactly what we want it to do. So now we're gonna go ahead and click on the OK button. And so now that we've clicked on the OK button, this is in here as a joint, but we have two problems. So the first problem is if we click and drag on this point right here, you can see how this object moves around. Well, we don't want to do that. We want to ground this so that it's not moving around. I'm gonna turn my sketches off real quick. And so what we wanna do is we wanna find our fixed device. We wanna right click on this and we wanna click on the button for ground. Now if I click and drag this, you can see how this doesn't move anymore. Now this object spins and it moves when we move our mouse, when we click and drag on it with this object grounded. In a minute, we're gonna go through and we're gonna set the joint limit on this because right now if I drag this, you can see how it can either come out of the hole or it can go all the way through this object. We don't necessarily want that. Instead, what I need to do first is I need to create a joint where this object slides because this object that makes up this part of our vise, the wood part of our vise is gonna move this way and also this way. And we need to add a joint to allow it to do that. So to do that, we're gonna go in, we're gonna add a second joint. We're gonna go to a symbol, click on the joint button and it's going to tell us that some components have been moved. Just go ahead and click continue for right now. And what we wanna do is we wanna add a joint for this object that aligns with a point on this face. Over here, you can see how we can mouse over this face and we can get a point right here. And what we can do is we can also mouse over this face and get a corresponding point. So we can mouse over this face 
And you can see how if I hold my mouse over this face right here and then I hold the control key, this will lock it to this face and I can click on this point to set our first marker. We can mouse over this face and hold the control key and click on this point to set our second marker. And you can see how the first thing we want is we want this to not flip. So we're gonna turn flip off. And once we turn flip off, then this uh, basically aligns those two points between the two objects. And we wanna go in here and um, set this as a slider joint because this is gonna slide along one axis. And so you can see how when we set this as a slider, we also need to set the correct axis so you can set this to the X or the Y or the Z axis. Well, in this situation, we want this to go along the Y axis because we want it to move this way and this way. And we can go ahead and click OK. Now, if we were to click and drag this, and I'm going to undo this, and somehow this object, the fixed vice, got ungrounded. So I'm going to go in here and ground it again. Now, if I click and drag this, you can see how it slides along this face right here. And we're going to go ahead and go into our slider and we're going to click this as and we're going to select the option for set as home position on this joint. So this is now the home position for this object. And I'm going to see if I can do that same thing with this object. So I'm going to move my cylinder here, right click on it and click on set as home position. Now, this is the home position for this object, which is good because we can use this to set our joint limits. Remember, if we click and drag this right now, this is going to go through our object. So what we need to do is we need to set a minimum and maximum slide on the cylindrical joint. So I'm going to right click on this, click on edit joint limits. And first of all, we want to set this joint limit to be a slide rather than a rotate because we want to set the limits of how far this can slide in a direction. Then I'm going to check the box for minimum and check the box for maximum. And so you can see how if I animate this right now, this is gonna animate the limits of this object. And so you can see how this is actually pretty close. I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop, but you can actually also click and drag this in order to set this. And so setting these can get a little bit tricky. So a lot of the time, because when you type in values, sometimes it's really easy to go in the wrong direction. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna click and drag these little flags. So I'm gonna set my maximum movement and my minimum movement by dragging these little flags. So I'm gonna drag this flag until this object is right here. And once you get kind of close to this, you can type in a value instead. So for example, you can see how I can type in a value on this one of zero for my maximum. And then we'll say negative 6.5 for my minimum. And then I can click animate to see just how far this will move, just to preview this to make sure that it's working the way that I want it to work. Then we can go ahead and click on okay. Well now, if I click and drag this, you can see how I can, uh, this will only move to these two joint limits. So now I can't drag this through this object or out through the other object. Now what we need to do is kind of like what we did in our uh, threaded screw tutorial, we need to set this so that our rotational movement of this handle is tied to the um, slide movement contained inside of this cylindrical joint. So in order to do that, we're gonna use what's known as a motion link. A motion link is gonna allow you to link the movement of two joints so that they're both associated with each other. And the first thing is when you do this, make sure you click on continue rather than um, capture position because we don't want to capture this as a new position. But what we want to do in this situation is we want to select this uh, cylindrical joint. So we're going to click on this with the motion link tool active and you're going to notice there's a button down here because this, uh, this kind of joint has two inputs. It has a rotational input and also a slide input. So it gives you an option to link with same joint. And so what we can do is we can set this so that a certain amount of turning is going to basically be corresponding with a certain amount of movement. So in this situation, I'm gonna say that when I turn this 360 degrees, this is gonna move one inch. So basically I'm saying whenever I turn this, you need this also needs to slide a certain amount of distance. So you can see how now when I animate this, this is moving in and out. And I can go ahead and click on okay. Well now with this joint, 
you can see how as I turn it, it's moving in and out. So my movement along this axis is now tied to my rotational movement. Now we've got our handle working the way that we want it to work. And so what we need to do now is we need to link the movement of this object to this object. So we're gonna create a second motion link. And before I do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this until it's in the position that I want it to start from when we're doing this. So I'm gonna turn this until this gets to right here. And then we're gonna go into a symbol and click on motion link. It's gonna tell us some components have been moved. In this situation, we wanna go ahead and capture this position because this is where we want this to start from. So we're gonna click on capture and that's gonna be really important so that you don't have spacing between this piece of your vise and this handle. We're gonna go ahead and click on capture position and then we're gonna select our two joints. So we're gonna click on this joint right here and this joint right here. And what we want to do is we want to set the distance for the slide to be equal for both of these. So really what we're telling this is we're telling this, okay, when this cylindrical joint moves an inch along this axis, we want this other joint to move an inch along this axis as well. So now if we click on OK, you can see how when we turn this, this device is now tied to that rotational joint. And because we've already set the joint limits right here, this will only go this far. So we can turn this all the way in and you can see how our vice piece moves in or we can turn it back out and our vice piece will turn back out. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you know you could do this with your different joints? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.